Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a variation to the problem that we discussed in the last video, which is slightly different from the problem that we discussed earlier. So take a look at this particular column. We had stacked rows and we had to unstack them in separate columns. That was we had. But this time, the number of columns in one single record could be different. So if you take a look at Cecilia here, she has seven columns. So she has a name, city, age, phone number, weight, gender, and a job. But for that matter, Iris has just got four columns. So he has his name, city, age, and phone. That's the data that he has. And Joanne has five, Peter has four. So the number of columns for every single record could be different. And how do we handle that? And then still be able to unstack the rows and bring it all together like this in separate columns. That's what we're gonna take a look at. So I have already created one query here, but I'm gonna take you right from the scratch and show you exactly how to do this. This is slightly tricky, so I want you to understand everything from the scratch. So I'm gonna pick up this particular column and in the data tab, I will just load this particular table. And once you do that, of course, uh, you get this change type, which I don't really want it as of now. I can do that later, but let's just start working here. The first thing that I need is, I need to kind of identify that when the record shifts to the next one. So you will be able to identify that using the null here. So you can see that this entire thing for Cecilia is the first row. This entire thing for Iris is the second row and this is the third row, so on and so forth. That you get to know only by the null value, which is right here. That's the breakup that the record has changed. So I'm just gonna maybe add a column and just write a quick formula just to find out that where are the null values here. So I'm just going to maybe write an if function here. You can also use the conditional column in case you want to do that by just maybe selecting the interface. So I'm going to say if the column one is equals to null, then give me a one else give me a null value. That's what I will write. That means wherever you find null, just next to that write a one. If you don't find a null, just give me a null value. All right, I'm just gonna say okay, and wherever there is a one, you can see that I get a one, otherwise I get a null. Now I'm gonna create an index column, which is starting from one, that's what I will do. So I get an index column. Now the way that I'm trying to solve this problem is the same way as I solved the earlier problem in the video. If you haven't watched that, I highly recommend that you watch that. So I'm again going to create like a row identifier and a column identifier. And once I'm able to do a row identifier, and a column identifier, then I'll be able to pivot the data very, very easily. All right, so I'm gonna create another column. Let me explain you the logic that I'm trying to build here. So I'm trying to build a, like a row identifier first, which is where I'm trying to do a running total of this particular column. So all of these rows actually, and the first bunch here belong to the first row, and all of these actually belong to the second row, all of these belong to the third row, so on and so forth. So I'd like to do, kind of do a running total of the number one, and then just keep incrementing it by one for all the values that are there in that bunch of rows. So I'm gonna come to the add columns tab and create a custom column here. This time I'm gonna use a function called list.firstn. So list.firstn. All right, list.firstn is actually asking me for a list, which is simply one single column of a particular table. Now that's the entire table. And from this table, I can actually pick up this particular column and let's just do that. So uh, let's just take a look at the name of the previous step. The name of the previous step is added index. So I'm just gonna maybe write that particular step name. So added index. Added index has this entire table with three columns. And from this entire table of three columns, I just wanna pick up the custom column. So I will write custom right here. And that's what I pick up. Now from this list, I actually wanna pick up, you know, first n values. The n could be first two values, first three values, you know, first four values, so on and so forth. But I definitely want to pick up the first n values. And the condition or the count is nothing but which is going to come from the index column. So index was just a helper column that I'm using in the first n formula. Let's just take a look at what do we get after we build this function. All right, so I'm just going to say OK. And there is my list. But if I just kind of click on the side of the list, what do I get? I get the first value of this particular column. Now, if I go to the second one here, I get first 
two values of this particular. Then if I go to the third one, I get first three values because we have a number three and here is the list. So first three values from the list. And if I kind of come to here, I actually get all of these first eight values and that is where I have my one. So I'd like to kind of keep summing these one. So here the total is going to be one, but here the total is going to be two. So that's what I would like to do. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to say list dot first and actually delivers me a list. You can see that we got a list here, but I'd like to sum that list. So I'm just going to use the function called list dot sum list dot sum start the bracket, close the bracket in the end and say, okay. And what do I get? I get the sum here. So you can see that we have one here and then we have two here and then we start to get three here. Cool. Now the problem is that uh, this is not the first row. Actually, this is the first row and this is actually the second row and all of this is actually the third row. So I'm going to have to revise my function and I'm going to have to say that, Hey, why don't you add one to the list dot sum output? I'm going to say, okay. And that is what I will get. So I'll get two here, then I'll get three here, but then I'll get four here but the one is missing. So I can write a quick if function to check that if I'm actually working in the first row, I should actually write one over here. So I can just come here and I can write a quick if function and I can say if, if the index column uh, is equals to one, that means we are currently in the first row, then I'd like to write one else. I'd like to do this list.sum calculation. I'm going to say, okay, and we have one here and the rest is the same, but I can now fill down this one to get one all across. So I can just right click on this column and I can just say fill, I can say fill down and this entire column gets filled down. All right. So now we have kind of built a row identifier. You can see that all of these ones are nothing but the first row. All of these twos are nothing but the second row. All of these threes are nothing but the third row of the data, right? So uh, of course we don't now need the null values. We are done with that. We don't need it. So I'm just going to come to the column one and I can uncheck the null, but I'd like to do remove empty. Remove empty will take care of any blank values as well as the null values. Uh, so just maybe to do remove empty. You can see not equal to null and not equal to blank. All right. So once we are here, now we need to start to build our column identifier. So if you take a look here, there are seven times one. So one, two, and then three, four, five, six, and then seven. That means this is going to have seven columns and this is going to have, let's say four columns. So I need a, I need a one to seven here. Then I need a one to four here. Then I need a one to five here. So like a serial number that resets itself after every row starts. So how do I actually do that? So I'm just going to maybe pick up this column, go to the transform tab and use the group by option this time. So I'm just going to say group by, and group by this particular column and the new column that you create here, let's just call the cells all and just keep all the rows of the table that you have. All right. So you can see that uh, I'm just going to group it by one, uh, making a new column by the name of all and keeping all of the rows of this table in that particular column. So I'm going to say, okay. And that's what I get. So now if I just kind of take a look here in this table, in this particular table, you can see that the entire data is right here. And this is where I like to start the counting from one up till let's say seven. And then in the second table that I have, I'd like to start from one up till four, so on and so forth. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column and add a custom column. And I will kind of add a, a column to the tables that are here in these columns. So I'm just going to use uh, table dot, uh, add index column table dot add index column. That's the formula that I will use. Now table dot index add index column actually asks you for a table name. So what is the table, which is where you will like to add a column. So these are the tables where I'd like to add a column, right? All, all of these tables are kept in the all column. So I'm just going to pick up the column here and I'm going to say, Hey, why don't you pick up every single table and start adding a column and which column I would like to add an index column. And the new column name that I add is let's say a column identifier and the counting actually should actually begin with one, right? That's what I will do. So three conditions done name of the table, name of the new column that I'm adding and the counting should begin with one. All right. I'm just going to say, okay. And what do I get? I get the table again, but this time the difference between this table and the earlier table is that this table did not have the additional column, but this table is going to have the additional column one to seven. So that's 
Awesome. Now let's just expand this particular table. So I'm just going to click on expand. And from this particular table, I'm just going to keep the column that I've just added, which is the column identifier and the original column, which contained my data. So that's column number one. I'm just going to say, okay, and let's just see what we get. So we get this uh, thing, this entire data. We have the column identifier and we also have the row identifier. Now we have everything, but I just don't need this particular column. I can just get rid of that. And now I have this, I have the column identifier and I also have the row identifier. So let's just maybe uh, actually what we have done as a mistake in the previous step is that once we were expanding the table, I actually had to uncheck the name prefix. So I'm just going to get rid of that, say OK, and the name is column identifier. Now this is cool. All right. Now let's just do the pivot table. So I'm just going to click on the column identifier and come to the transform tab and I'm just going to say make a pivot table. So pivot column. So it's going to pick up this particular column and create columns. So that's what I have done. And in the value section of the pivot table, I'm just going to put actually column one, not custom one, actually column one. All right. And in the advanced options, certainly I will say do not aggregate and this is good to go. I'm going to say, OK, and that is my data. So Cecilia's record, if you just take a look, it has got seven columns right up till the end. And the other people have their relevant details all fit inside this table. Now let's just start to clean this. I certainly don't need this the row identifier anymore. I can just get rid of that. And certainly I have to rename these columns as well. Now renaming these columns is going to be a bit of challenge for because there are seven columns here. Also, there is a possibility that I might get the eighth column sometime later. Cecilia could have very well another record being added right here. To solve that problem, what I have done is I have tried to automate even the column names as well. So here in the Excel, I have created a small table, which is where I have columns one to seven and the rename that I'd like to do. So rename one to name and rename column number two to city, rename column number three to age. And this table is what I have loaded in my Power Query. So you can see that we have a renames here and the table has been loaded. The same table that you can see uh, it's the same table. So which has two columns, the number and the rename. Now let's just take a look at what we have to do. So if I just start to rename it manually, maybe I'll just call this column as name, press enter, call this column as city, press enter. You can see that uh, the step that gets created is table dot rename columns. And inside of that, we have two lists. So we have an outside list, which is the outside curly bracket. And then we have smaller lists inside of the larger, larger curly bracket. So we have list inside of lists. And if you take a look at the smaller list, a smaller list is going to have two parts. One is going to be the name of the current column, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's going to have the name of the new column that you would like to revise and rename it to. So one is going to be renamed as name and two is going to be renamed as city. And both of these are individual lists. So we need a larger list and then we need smaller lists inside of that, which is going to have the name and the rename. So that's what we're going to do in this particular table. So in this particular table, we're going to create the same structure list inside of a list. So I'm going to come to the source tab, which is where I have loaded this particular table in my Power Query. Once I do that, then of course, change type step doesn't really matter here. I mean, just make sure that everything is text here. So column is text and this rename is text. So just convert everything into a text because you cannot really have a numeric data type here. So text and text. And then I'm just going to transpose this table. So make the rows as columns, columns as rows. So that's the step that I do, transpose the table and the table becomes like that. Now this is going to be one list. This is going to be another list. This is going to be another list. Every list is going to have two parts, the name and the rename, the name and the rename. That's the thing. And then I'm going to use the function called table dot two columns which is going to take an input of the name of the table, which is nothing but the previous step. And it's going to create like a list of a list. So it, this is actually a list inside of this list. We have smaller list, which is where I have a name and a rename. And now this list, which is called as renames, I'm just going to maybe input that right here. So I am just going to maybe cancel everything and just call this that why don't you pick up the names from the rename column. This is going to give me the ability to kind of change the names right here from the spreadsheet. I don't have to actually come back to the query and do the renaming again and again and again. All right. And the last input here is that just in case you miss out on anything, I can just write missing field dot ignore, which is the last input of this. And we are good to go. So this is the name of the table. These are all my renames, uh, which is where I have a list and a sublist. 
and um, this is the third optional input missing field dot ignore I'm just gonna press enter and let's just see do we get any errors or not so we don't get any errors this is all good to go and now I'm just gonna say close close and load to and probably load this table right here on my Excel All right, the same table gets loaded right here, but let's just test this out if, if, if this is working or not. So for Cecilia, what I'm going to do is maybe add another record. So let's just say that she has three children. I'm going to write the number three. Push everything down by one row because we need to have one blank row. That's the identifier that we have built. Right click here and I'm just going to say refresh. So I should now have the eighth column, but you can see that the eighth column is not renamed as of now. This column should be renamed to number of children and I can write eight here to my this table. That's the benefit of this table. So write number eight here and I will say number of children. So press enter and then I can just maybe come back and refresh this table and that's what I have. All right, so we get number of children as the last column. So that's brilliant. And you can just keep, keep on adding everything to this table and it's going to get refreshed here. Now, just one thing before I end, this solution is going to break if uh, you start to maybe expect that if I can just write maybe three here and the record for Iris is automatically going to push the three to number of children column here. It's actually going to come here. So the in the order in which the columns get distributed is going to remain the same for every single bunch of records right here, right? So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. Rest everything is cool. Let me know if you have any questions around this. I'd be glad to help. All right, this was a long one. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.